This is Trophy Gold, the Temple of the Peerless Star, part one. I want to begin by having all of us introduce ourselves. So when I call on you, please say your name, your pronouns, and anything else you would like for us to know about you. I will start. My name is Jason. I use he, him. They is also fine. I am the founder of The Gauntlet and the publisher of Trophy Gold, and I am the co-host of the Fear of a Black Dragon podcast. Uh, let's go over to Alicia. Hello, I'm Alicia. I use they and she pronouns, and uh, I make and write for games. A lot of Rindlewood Bay stuff. I do have a trophy dark incursion. Um, I designed Paranormal Inc., which is a fun GMless version of uh, Rindlewood Bay. And uh, yeah, that's me. Fabulous, thank you. And David. Hey, yes, I am David. I use he, they pronouns. Uh, I am the host and producer for a podcast called Trials of the Apocalypse, where we play different PBTA games. Uh, and I've played with uh, Jason in a few things now, and no most notably for this, uh, a, a incursion in Trophy Dark. And I've never played Trophy Gold before, so I'm really excited. Fabulous. Thank you so much. And Kavya. I'm Kavya. I use she, her pronouns, and um, I'm actually just starting to dip my feet into the entire TTRPG online group. Fabulous. Thank you so much. And Jacob. I was almost on mute, but hi, I'm Jacob Poor. I am uh, loosely experienced with Trophy Gold, have been lurking in the Trophy Discord for ages. More relevantly, I am also a professional game master with Start Playing Dot Games, and I help produce an indie TTRPG podcast called Diacast, where I and a group of friends help, uh, where I and a group of friends just throw ourselves at various indie RPGs. Uh, it's going for a couple of years now, and Trophy is on our list. So you could say I have a, well, semi-professional interest in being here today. Fantastic, thank you. And I wanna begin by going over CATS. CATS is an acronym that I use at the beginning of every game I run in order to establish some basic expectations. It's a procedure that is. The, it's a procedure, the acronym stands for concept, aim, tone, and subject matter. So the concept of Trophy Gold, Trophy Gold is a, a game about treasure hunters, uh, adventurers who are going into the lost and forgotten parts of the world in order to uh, retrieve uh, treasures and uh, antiquities or whatever they can get their hands on in order to uh, make money and satisfy a drive that they have. They need this money in order to satisfy a very um, expensive goal that they each have. It is, the game is a spinoff of Trophy Dark. Um, Trophy Dark is a game about treasure hunters who are doomed and uh, Trophy Gold, the treasure hunters aren't quite as doomed, they're more desperate. And so we like to say desperate treasure hunters. It is much more of a um, traditional sort of like party-based fantasy adventure game. So if you're familiar with things like Dungeons and Dragons or something like that, it, it's it's similar and somewhat uh, in in uh, purpose, I guess, but it's pretty different in tone and subject matter. Um, in terms of this particular incursion that we're doing, and that's what we call adventures and trophy uh, incursions, um, it's the Temple of the Peerless Star. It was written by myself. Um, it was originally written or developed uh, as part of an old podcast I used to do called Discern Realities for Dungeon World. And then it got uh, published for Dungeon World and then it got trans, uh, or it got uh, translated to, to Trophy Gold and it is now part of the core Trophy Gold book. Um, I don't wanna say too much more about it than that though. Okay, back to cats. So the aim, uh, the aim of us today as players is we are going to create characters and then we're going to introduce them and then we are going to begin play. Um, after the session is over, we will have a debrief and then uh, we'll be all set to go for next week. We'll be playing this over the course of three weeks. The aim of the characters is to stay alive and get enough treasures to satisfy their burdens. Uh, that is your main goal and your, your dual goals, I should say. 
the aim of us sort of, um, well, like just sort of like as terms of storytelling, our aim is to tell a good story. And so that might mean that your characters are sometimes in grave danger or danger they're not gonna be able to escape and that's okay. Uh, we embrace in Trophy Gold a play ethos that we call both play to win and play to lose. Trophy Dark is just play to lose. Uh, trophy Gold is play to win and play to lose. So try to keep your characters alive. Try to get treasure. Try to accomplish whatever tasks you're trying to accomplish. But if it goes south and your character looks like they're not going to survive, then lean into that and try to give us the best story that you can. The tone of the game um, is not quite as dark as Trophy Dark, but it is still pretty dark. Um, this particular incursion has um, is a much more sort of traditional dungeon crawl type thing, but it definitely has like some pretty uh, like dark religious uh, sort of like in, in, in you know sort of um, uh, implications to it. Um, in terms of subject matter, uh, all the trophy incursions, or at least the official ones, helpfully have a uh, sort of little content warning piece on them. So I can say what is in, uh, what sorts of things you might expect in this particular incursion. I need to look it up though real quick, give me a moment. Where are we at? Here we, almost there, I think, here we go. Okay, uh, body horror graphic violence, human sacrifice, religion, as I noted, and snakes in particular. So bear those things in mind. Um, we will have safety tools on the table and those safety tools are first, uh, the open door policy. You can leave for any reason. You don't have to explain yourself. Second is the X card. Um, you can say X card or type it in the chat if something happens in the story that you just find to be uncomfortable in an unfun way. Um, I will stop and I will change whatever was just X carded. Um, I might ask what it is, but I won't ask why. And then um, we'll also have lines and veils. Now lines and veils will be handled on the uh, safety tab of the character keeper, which I will share with you in a bit. But basically lines are things that you just don't wanna have in the game story-wise at all. And veils are things that you're okay with being in the game, but you prefer not to role play them. Uh, these things that I've listed, body horror, graphic violence, human sacrifice, religion, and snakes are pretty tough to avoid in this incursion. So to the, to the extent that we can just veil those, that would be better. And if we need to do like a roaming line, we can. Like if it just gets like to be too, too much for people, you can just say. Um, but feel free to definitely uh, let us know on the safety tab. Um, I usually like to say what my lines and veils are, and you all will just put whatever you want on the sheet whenever we get ready to make characters. Uh, but as an example, um, I will put sexual violence behind a line. I'm not going to have that in the game. As a veil, I'm going to put torture. I'm okay with torture being in the setting. I just prefer not to role play it. So that is lines and veils. And are there any questions about cats? Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and share the character keeper with you all, and we will pause the video in order to make characters. Okay, let's go ahead and meet these characters. We're gonna do very basic introductions. Um, name, uh, your character's pronouns, um, your burdens, actually, no, don't worry about that. Just your name, your occupation, your background, your drive, and your rituals. Those are the most important things we need to know about right now. If you know anything about your drive at this point, maybe like what it means or what it means to you, you can tell us that as well. Um, or if you have any other like thoughts about your character's backstory, but it's okay if you don't, because part of what we're gonna do is explore that as we play. So let's go in reverse order of the sheet and start with Jacob and Revel. Yes, okay. So Revel is a they and a them. The, um, they are occupied at, they are a zealot. Um, they are a zealot. And I mean, in the background, it says they were a failed pilgrim. They, they didn't fail. They just, you know, had a unique inspiration. They didn't get lost. And um, they are seeking um, 
yeah, they are they are seeking they are desperate for gold in order to um, properly demonstrate their appreciation for the tireless work that the justices of law and order do. There's no records that need to be expunged, none at all. He's got nothing to prove. Um, and I think it's a, a, just generally speaking, it's a countdown to when I start doing um, start in, doing my best impression of a um, of a, like a, a, an astropath from the Dawn of War games and going witness your doom. Oh, and that's the only reason that I pitched that doom ritual. Very good, fabulous. Thank you so much. And I don't think I have any other questions at this time, but like I said, I'll be asking plenty as we play. All right, let's go to Kavya and Espahan. So Espahan, she, her pronouns. She was a banished dancer. Um, obviously it was because the people did not appreciate her art. She did definitely did not make moves on anyone in any position of power that was already taken. And she is now an astrologer spreading her um, wisdom to the people and she wishes to someday become part of the swirling court no idea what that means yet we'll figure it out and her rituals right now are ward and vapor fantastic thank you so much and david tell us about austin i just want to point out that i have longtime viewers of the video we have an Osto and a Revel in this campaign. Uh, these are the two most commonly picked names in the game <laughs> <laughs> by a lot. <laughs> I think there's an Osto in literally everything on my YouTube playlist, but that's okay, David. Your your Osto okay. is special and unique. Go. Uh huh. So, somehow I doubt that. Uh, so which which fields do we want to go over right now? Occupation, background, occupation, drive. background, and drive are the big ones. Okay. Uh, but also your rituals too. Okay. Cool. So yes, I am Osto, uh, he, him. Uh, my, my occupation is blacksmith. Uh, my background is an enlightened miner. Uh, and my drive is to rebuild Hisham's fountain. Uh, my, my general conceit is that uh, Osto was a, a simple laborer. He sort of split his time in the mines and uh, doing some sort of, I think he was like on the path to becoming a blacksmith. Uh, and while he was in the mines, he found something of Hisham and like was given these visions that he must rebuild Hisham's fountain. And so that's kind of the, the base of the character there. Uh, and then my rituals, I have yoke. Uh, I can apply the strength of a spectral bull to a situation. So. Fantastic. I love it. I will point out uh, just for you, David, so you know, um, there's a whole chapter in Trophy Loom about Hisham's fountain. So you oh. can... Go read that at your leisure and have it inform your character if you wish. Oh, excellent. Um, I'll check so, that out. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And Alicia, tell us about Nevin, please. Uh, all right. So Nevin is my sexy lumberjack. Uh, he, him pronouns. Uh, he is a woodcutter, a former oppressed laborer. And uh, my drive is to free the kindly followers of the Piper. And I think that... Uh, I think that that's somehow tied to his background at this point in time. We'll see how that comes out. Um, also, it I think we've decided that Osto and Nevin are twins. Yes. I love it. And what rituals did you pick? Oh, yes. I chose door and maze. Fantastic. Um, great. I love it. There is also a whole chapter about the Piper. So um, if we will, I'll get you those PDFs if you need them. Um, okay. And someday in the future, there'll be books. I don't know when. Um, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the, just a couple of rules things, and then we'll take a little break. Um, we'll introduce the incursion, then we'll take a break. So a couple of rules things though, um, especially because uh, I think we have some folks here who maybe are not as familiar with Trophy. So I wanna cover a few things. First, the game is pretty collaborative. Um, so I have an incursion, which is sort of the equivalent of a module or a dungeon for another game, but it is pretty skeletal. It doesn't have a, a through line of like a story. It's mostly just a bunch of set pieces. They're literally called sets. And you interact with them and um, and things happen. But, in, but the main thing about this game is that 
you will have plenty of opportunities as a player to contribute to the story, to fill in the details. There's a lot of negative space for you to fill in. And so that's the fun of it. And so there's one particular uh, mechanic in the game called the risk roll. And the risk roll is your best opportunity as a player to shape the story and you will be expected to shape the story. There is one part of the risk roll called the devil's bargain. And I wanna talk about that briefly. The devil's bargain is something that happens in the game no matter what. And so if you're rolling dice, uh, you are building your die pool. And at a certain point, everybody else will offer devil's bargains to you. So um, I'll give you an example. Let's say that Esfahan is trying to jump across a, a pit, right? Okay. And so we're going to do a risk roll. And we're building up dice and everyone starts making offers to Kavya because you make the offers to your to the player, not the character, right? Um, and so one offer might be, well, no matter what, my devil's bargain is this, no matter what, Esfahen, whether you land, whether you cross the pit or not, you are going to drop your weapon you're throwing knives, they're gonna fall down the pit. And so if you roll and you succeed, it's because the knives just fell out of your pack or something, but you got across the pit. If you fail, it's because Esfahen also fell into the pit, right? So that's why, that's how it works, right? The devil's bargain, but no matter what, in exchange for the die, you're losing your knives. That's the, that's the key thing. That's a simple, straightforward devil's bargain. And sometimes that's the best thing, if that's all you can think of, or just because if it feels right. A more interesting devil's bargain could be, no matter what, on the other side of the pit is an emissary from the swirling court. Now that's really interesting because that's something we had not really, no one had conceived of yet, but we know it's part of the character, it's part of their drive. And so someone thinks that might be fun to do. Um, and so, if Kavya accepts that devil's bargain, no matter what, succeed or fail, uh, there's an emissary of the swirling court on the other side of the pit. And that's how the story develops, right? It's these, these, like, these things that people uh, add, to the, add to the story. And so be prepared to play like that. I am going to be presenting challenges like you would expect a GM to do. I'm going to be reacting to all the things you're doing, but you also are responsible for paying attention to the other characters and filling in fun details and, and challenging them as well when, you're, uh, when the dice allow you to do it. So that's one thing. Another thing about Trophy Gold is I wanna talk about the set and the hunt roll token. So this game is driven by an economy called the hunt roll token. You'll be collecting them as you play and you have a section on the sheet called tokens for you to uh, or hunt tokens for you to, 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 to note them down as you get them. If we were playing in person, we have fancy shiny gold tokens that we would pass out. We don't have those. Um, but basically, as you search, as you explore the world, as you look at things, as you ask questions, you'll be collecting these tokens. And you can spend the tokens in two different ways. The first way you can spend it is you can spend a token to find a treasure. This is a principal way you find treasure. You just spend it and uh, I give you a treasure. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. Um, if you save them up though, or pool them with other players, you can spend three and achieve what's called the set goal. So the dungeon is divided up into sets and each set has a goal. That goal is something that your characters are trying to accomplish or it's something that we as players think would be cool to happen in the story, right? So the set goal could be find the hidden treasure of the cult or something, right? That's a, that's a pretty common sort of set goal. Or it could be something more interesting, like um, learn the secret history of this place, right? But in any case, if you spend the three tokens, you automatically achieve the goal and the thing happens. If you don't spend the tokens, you can still accomplish the set goal just through normal gameplay. But sometimes you might want to spend the tokens because it is strategically advantaged to do so or tactically advantageous. Because as your rune starts going up and you have not met your burdens yet, that's when the game gets to be really sticky. Because if your character 
leaves the incursion without meeting your burdens in gold, they are retired from play. They will die destitute and penniless. <laughs> and so, and we care about them no more. And so you must meet your burdens. And so that's why that's where spending tokens on the seckles can be handy because you might need to get past a certain part of the dungeon to go a little bit longer, right? Um, or you might want to save them for like a seckle that's going to be like really critically important. You don't necessarily know what's coming, but sometimes you just know, right? Um, like some set goals are like, get past this big monster. <laughs> you know, that might be that might be a worthy set goal to, to spend tokens on. In any case, that's the sort of strategic part of the game. The game is handled out of character in a very gamey kind of way that frequently. So just be, be aware of that. And so with all that said, um, I just want to give you an overview of that stuff. We'll learn as we play. There's other things to learn, but those are just some basic things to be aware of because they're a little different from other types of games like this. I'm going to go ahead and introduce the incursion, and then we will take a break. So, the Temple of the Peerless Star. The priests of the Temple of the Peerless Star in Amberet. Amberet is the capital city of the setting. The priests of the Temple of the Peerless Star in Amberet have declared a holy night an action they haven't taken for over 30 years, ever since Ramat Ilznar, the star they worship, visibly dimmed from a bright, fiery white to a dull, sickly yellow. No one knows why they declared the holy night after so long, but the faithful are taking advantage of a rare opportunity to nourish their connection to the peerless star, pouring into the temple's main sept by the dozens in order to receive blessings from the star priests. I'm gonna pose a question to each of you. You each are gonna have your own question and you can answer it uh, whenever you want. Um, when we get back from break, you can answer it next week. I, I don't care, but at some point I, I would like for you to answer it. In any case, I want you to think about it. And you may wanna note your question down somewhere. I'm gonna start with a question for uh, Revel, and from here after I will refer to you by your character name whenever we're talking about character stuff. Revel or Revel, I can't recall. Um, your question is, tell me about the constellation that was brightest in the sky on the night you were born. Has it affected your life for good or ill? Think on it. Esfahan. What great treasures do the priests of the temple of, <clears throat> sorry, what great treasures do the priests of the temple parade in front of their followers during religious festivals? Think on that for a bit and then answer it whenever you wish. Osto. Were you taught to worship Ramet Ilznar, the peerless star, as a child? If not, how do your gods, or the gods of your community, view the star and those who worship it? And finally, Nevin, what miracle or demonstration of power have you observed being performed by the star priests? Now, you all have your questions, ponder them. Continuing on, you've heard rumors that the Temple of the Peerless Star is built atop a set of catacombs and that the star priest's most valuable artifacts are hidden in this subterranean space. Most days it would be extremely difficult to infiltrate the temple, but the newly declared Holy Night presents an opportunity you can slip into the temple unnoticed and find the catacombs while the star priests are preoccupied with ministering to the faithful. You will have to make a choice as a group. Whether you wish to enter through the main sept, basically the front door, disguised as a worshiper, or 
enter the back of the temple by way of an unguarded service entrance. Or because there are four of you, you could split up and do both. Some could go through the front, some could come through the back. And also because Esfahan is an astrologer, I'm going to tell you that you know, Esfahan, that the temple has a tower that is not part of the main structure of the temple. It's accessed from the inside. That tower at the top of it is a fantastic stargazing space. So you know this, you can do whatever you want with that information, but you all need to decide when we get back from the break, whether you want to go in through the front, through the back, or both. Um, we'll take five, and we'll see you in five minutes. All right, we're back. So, go into the front, go into the back, and Esfrahen has extra special knowledge about this tower that looks a lot like this thing in my background, uh, the top of it. Uh, let's just have the scene with all of you outside the temple making a decision. There's worshipers basically pouring in through the front. You could go in through the front easily. Nobody will see you. You can just pretend you blend in completely. Or the back is currently unattended because everyone's busy dealing with worshipers. But it's a lively time. Like the streets are are filled with people. Even people who do not worship Ramat Ilsnar are... Um, are, uh, are just excited by this energy, right? Because the temple is usually so closed off, like they, they haven't had a holy night in ages. And here I will tell you that this incursion, every incursion has a theme. And the theme of this incursion is stars above and stars below. The stars above are of principal concern to this temple, but you all are concerned with the stars below in the catacombs which is where the treasures are. And so with all that said, role play. Before we start, can I just get double check on that, the, the proper name of that? I'll, I was gonna type it for you actually, and I forgot. Um, Magnificent, type, I'll, thank I'll you. I'll type it for you here. It's a great question because it's an important part of the scenario. Ramit Ilsnar, and I will tell you, uh, this is something you would know in the setting um, this naming scheme with ILS in the middle uh, is, is very uh, common among a group of people called the Naganese. And the, and the Naganese are all about snakes. <laughs> snakes are their thing. Um, but as far as you know, there's no snake connection to the Temple of Peerless Star. So. Yet. Yet. He foreshadowed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about all of you, but Nevin likes it in the back door. Thank you, Nevin. <laughs> uh, Revel is up on a um, Revel is up on a box. Um, is up on a box with their arms spread wide, um, uh, exhorting uh, to the uh, exhorting to the passing crowd, um, exhorting to the passing crowd. Foolishness! This is foolishness! I tell you, the star is dimming. This, of course, is giving them a perfect exclusion zone of privacy, as everyone stays at least three meters away. <laughs> I wonder if. Uh, hold on, I, it's going to take me a minute to get your characters memorized. Actually, if you'll just change your uh, Zoom name to your character name, that'd help me a lot. I do mm -hmm. wonder if if Ravel will blend in like the rest of you <laughs> if you choose to go in through the front. <laughs> oh yeah, um, uh, and over over the over the shoulder, like uh, over their shoulder, they're going to uh, they're going to go. Um, uh, yeah, they're going to say. Um, yeah, I can always, I, I can always blend in, you know, you know, no, repent, repent, repent. That's right. So that's right. Sort of. Yeah. So I could just go in the front, maybe, you know, cover for one of you as my apprentice or something. But you know, it's not wise to snoop. Repent. Yeah. That's what I thought. 
Esperhen, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. I think Esperhen is trying to stay as far from this seclusion radius as she can because um that's not something she wants to be associated with it useful as it is and she's considering going in through the back door but she's not sure how to bring up this point when she doesn't want to enter this um ring yeah and osto yeah uh, osto uh standing over by by nevin when he announces that you know he likes it in the back door i think that's the place to go uh I think Osto will kind of like try to shimmy stealthily, like 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 he's expecting people to be looking. He's like gonna sort of shuffle to the side over where Esfahan is and be like, "What do you think about going in the back door?" I think the back door sounds lovely, but um, your shuffling is more conspicuous than you think it is. We can we oh. can just walk normally. I think okay. that is subtle okay. enough. Normally, yes. <clears throat> uh, and he'll like stand up a little bit too straight and like stride over to uh, Revel and be like, What do you think about going in the back door? Well, the back door. Oh, sorry, didn't notice you there. Um, that, that, that also works. That also works. Okay. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Either way. Walk stock over to Nevin. I think we're going in the back door. Yes, good. Let's go! And I just take off. Indeed, indeed. And so, with all that said, that does present us our first set. Our first set is, I need to find the name of it, actually. Ah. So are our sets then like the rings in Trophy Dark? Uh, It's a little different. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain as we go. Okay, okay, okay. Our first set is the Sacristy and Priest Quarters. The rear portion of the temple, not generally open to the public, consists of a few short, tight corridors connecting four rooms, each of which is behind a simple wooden door, none of which are locked. These four rooms in the back of the temple are the Priest Quarters, where the priests sleep, the common room where they relax, the kitchen, and the sacristy. The sacristy is a sort of um, like a storage closet for holy robes and things like that, right? Candles under glass cloches affixed to the walls light the way. And I'll give you a little extra detail as well. As you are Going around back, you'll hear the soft swishing sound of an acolyte sweeping the area behind the temple. You can just wait for them to step back inside and they don't even close the door behind them. Somebody probably calls them away because there's so much to do up in the front. There's no time to sweep. And so they rush off. And as you step into the this back hall that connects up these four large areas in the back, you'll notice that the floor tiles beneath your feet are painted a deep blue, deep blue and black with pinpricks of yellow and white. Each tile is a tiny representation of the night sky. We have a set goal here. Our set goal in the, for this set is to Gain entry to the basement. You can just search around for the entrance to the basement. You can spend three tokens once you have them to automatically accomplish it. Uh, After you accomplish the set goal, you can still continue searching. You don't have to move on. You can still stay back here. But this, this is where we're at. But you do have these sort of like four rooms that are connected by this hall, the priest quarters, the common room, the kitchen, and the sacristy. Esfahan, what do you do? So the first thing, as soon as she notices that the tiles are representations of the night sky, is um, she kind of 
she kneels, does not crouch, kneels and tries to look closer at them to see if they are accurate representations or just someone smattering paint to look pretty. I love it. Make a hunt roll. So if you go to the dice roller, just mm -hmm. uh, the hunt roll, you either roll one light die or two light dice. Uh, you get one light die just for doing it. And you get two light dice if you have a relevant skill or piece of equipment that helps you. And since you have uh, skills related to stars and things, I'm, I think you're probably good to go for, for two dice. So do a, okay. uh, in the die roller, it's semicolon hunt and then space two. Yep. And that didn't work for some reason. I don't know why. Yep. Um, I'll try it one more time. <laughs> Maybe it's just the die, the die roller has been so, so fidgety lately. Okay. Today we are facing technical difficulties. Yeah, Should yeah. I just get my dice out and um, roll yeah, manually? I think, I think that's probably what we're going to have to end up doing here. I wish the dice roller would start working properly. It's very annoying. Cool. Oh, well, just roll two dice. Yep. Five and a four. Fantastic. <clears throat> so on a five, you get a token. So go ahead and note a hunt roll token on your sheet. And on a five, oh, it's at the top, it's that little block in the top part where it says hunt tokens. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Also, per the rules, if you want to follow along, there's a, um, I think the, there should be a tab with the rules, but maybe not. I don't know anything anymore. No, there's no. not. I uh, thought, the, thought the moves were on here for some reason. In any case, um, a five means, a, a four or five means you get a token, but you encounter something terrible. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Nevin, what do you do? While well, Esfahen is looking at floor tiles, <laughs> what are you doing, Nevin? I'm going to take my axe, like the back of it, and just like tap on the closest door that's sort of to me and just be like, cheap wood. That and is, I'm gonna my head in there. that may be true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do a hunt roll. I think the closest door is the, uh, it's the actual priest quarters. So go ahead and just do a hunt roll. It's one yeah, die, okay. unless you can make a case for two dice here. Uh, I mean, is it related to the wood? Maybe. Uh, you have I beasts, know. strength, trails, and rebellion. <laughs> I mean, maybe rebellion, because we're like sneaking in the back door here, you know, mm -hmm. doing something. But also strength, because I mean, if he doesn't control the strength, it could just break and he could assume it's shoddy wood, <laughs> but maybe it's not. Go ahead and roll two dice, I'll take it. A one and a two. Uh, so we're looking for the, we always look for the highest dice and you got a two and that means you will encounter something terrible and you get no token. We will come back to that. Osto, what are you doing right now? Uh, I think uh, Osto was following behind Nevin at first and sort of like looking down and being like, for such a nice building, they've failed to clean the floors. It's covered in specks. Uh, and like Nevin taps on one of the doors and, you know, cracks it and starts to go in that way. And at first Osta is going to follow him. Uh, and then he perks up. Oh, is, is that food? Uh, and I think he wanders towards the kitchen instead. Very good. We'll get to that in a moment. And uh, Revel, what do you do? Uh, you're muted, Jacob. Revel is unmuted and proud. Um, they are going to immediately uh, head for the sacristy and they are looking at kind of three things they're looking for. Um, a, uh, in, order of, in order of preference, A, something precious. B, some kind of like priest's robes or, or uniform or something like that, ideally multiple. Three, 
some kind of um i don't know if there's some kind of trap door or something because the, the, sac the sacristy the storeroom seems like the most logical place to hide a um hide a door to catacombs yeah. or anything like that love it um we'll pick up with it in a moment you can head over to the sacristy though esfahan you got your token and you encounter something terrible it's pretty not nothing too bad but i will tell you that in the floor tiles the star that you know to be ramat ilznar the one that these people worship it is particularly pronounced in the illustration <laughs> like the paint the blob of paint is just a little bigger and <clears throat> they have also gone through the trouble of connecting lines that make a constellation. And the constellation, which Ramat Ilznar is the very tip of, makes a vague snake-like shape. Our foreshadowing didn't last long. That did not take too long. <laughs> Indeed mm. not. But there's nothing surprising about that because the Naganese, uh, the temple is not necessarily Naganese, but it has this sort of heritage, right? Because of the naming of things. And so, Nevin, the priest quarters. You poke your head in there. It's a long dormitory with about a dozen beds on either side. And each bed has uh, a footlocker at the foot of it, a uh, straw mattress, a feather pillow, a thin blanket, these people seem like they live pretty ascetic lives, all things considered. And the terrible thing is you feel just a little pinprick of metal against your neck. There is an acolyte in the pale yellow robes of the acolytes, young also. And there's a little nerve, you can tell the the blade that he's holding to your throat is vibrating with nerves. And he says, who are you? What are you doing here? I am Nevin. I came in through the back door. I think you ought to go back from where you came, Nevin. This is a holy night. If you're looking for, if you're looking for penance or if you're looking for blessings from Ramat Ilznar, you should go into the front. Don't you think? Nevin prefers the back door. Is there anyone with you? He says. He's trying to like look around. You look past you to see if you have anybody with you. Yes. May I hear this? Uh, yeah, I think as you're walking away, you might overhear Nevin talking to someone <laughs> inside, poking their head inside a, a room. What do you do? Um, look at the open door to the sacristy, sigh, about face, towards the, uh, t t towards the dormitory and go, um, uh, and say, Nevin, my, Nevin, my child, have we come across another member of the faithful? And just kind of like push my way, push my way in, um, confront the, and confront the acolyte, um, and say, "There's no need. There's no need to be alarmed. There's no need to be alarmed. Forgive my, um, forgive my disciple here. He is but a simple sort with a one-track mind. We've come such a long way to be a part of this blessed festival." Very good. We'll come back to it. Osto, <clears throat> the kitchen. There's a cooking hearth, stone countertops, a pantry, utensils sort of strewn about. What do you do? I mean, there's a kind of a festival thing happening right now. Is there there's anything that's been cooked in here lately or anything sitting about food wise? Uh, tell me how you investigate. What do you actually do? Uh, I think if there is, I think first, like, you know, going over all the counters or or any sort of tables, seeing if there's anything laid out uh, that people have been taking to deeper in the temple or anything like that. 
Um, but otherwise, if he doesn't find anything on those surfaces, just opening every cabinet in this place. Make every a, single one of them. Make a hunt roll. Uh, taking a look at your skills. Mm paths maybe i don't know <laughs> uh i could also see that if, if anything is like closed and supposed to be locked i do have a, a training in destruction oh and i see I just oh, like, I be see. like ripping doors off <laughs> oh yeah that's uh that's pretty good i actually like that yeah you just like kind of wrenching <laughs> locked cabins you know open uh in any case make a two die hunt roll okay um hey that's not bad uh my low is a two but my high is a five Go ahead and take a token and you will encounter something terrible. I will tell you the terrible thing you encounter right now and then we'll pick back up with it. But essentially it's this. You pop open one of the cabinets and when you do so, there is a scorpion. crawling down on your hand, resting atop the back of your hand. It's a big one. And we'll come back to that in a bit. Esfahan, I think Nevin and Revel probably have under control whatever's going on in the priest quarters. Osto went over to the kitchen. The back there, that back area is fairly, back here is, there's not too many people around. There's really no one around, except for this one guy in the priest quarters apparently. Um, what do you do after you're done checking out the tile? So she's going to get up gracefully and she's going to look at the vague direction that Nevin and Revel are in, realize that it's good, they got it, and it's good. If it's not good, it'll come back and haunt her later. It's fine. Um, she's not particularly interested in the kitchen. Um, she's actually going to go to the set. I did not know how to pronounce it. The um the place that Ravel was initially going to go. This to. is the sacristy. Yeah, sacristy. Um. Yeah. So the sacristy is actually the part of the back area that is closest to the front part of the temple. It's probably like the the middle space between the front of the temple and and here. Um. And when you go in, you can see that in fact there's a door on the opposite side that probably goes into the temple. Right. But you're going in, it's a small room with vestments hanging on hooks and several ceremonial tools arranged on shelves. Uh, there is another door opposite the entrance that leads to the sept. Um, what do you do? Steal some clothes, first off. Steal some what? Clothes. Uh, you can take a set of, of uh, star priest robes, and put that in your found equipment. There's a section down below for found equipment. You can just list things there. Yep, found it. Uh, then what? Oh, that's painful. Um, then she's going to look around and kind of press her ear to the wall at various places and knock and try to see if there's like a secret thing. I like that. Let's do a hunt roll. You have one die to start okay. and you have a second die if you can make a case for it, either from skills or if you have a piece of equipment that would be helpful. Mm, equipment, uh, unless I'm using the deck of cards to tell my fortune, no. <laughs> um, There's also, um, you have three slots that are like open slots. If you click the drop down, uh -huh. you can have any of those things in your backpack as well. Okay. That's actually where I got deck of cards from. I found it in the list and I was like, replaced it. Yeah. I don't think I can make a case for it any of these. I have darkness, stars, symbols, and grace. And um, unless they have marked the secret path with a symbol of sorts, I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Go ahead and just make a um, make a one die roll. I will tell you with just one die, you're at the mercy of that one die. And if you get a one, you lose all your tokens. So don't get a one. <laughs> God damn it, dice hate me. <laughs> Oh, they do not hate me. It's a five. Nice. Take another token, and you will encounter something terrible, which we'll get back to in a moment. So Revel and Nevin, this acolyte steps back, and he still has the knife bared. And it sounds like, Revel, you're going to try to talk him down. Uh, that is a risk roll. Now, the way the risk roll procedure works is we, first of all, state what you're trying to accomplish. I think it's pretty obvious what you're trying to accomplish. 
The next thing is the rest of us um, as players get to say what we think could go wrong if you fail. So Alicia, Kavya, and David and I get to each speak. Uh, whoever has an idea, go ahead. What could go wrong? Uh, what's gonna go wrong here potentially is that I, my very simple-minded man that I am, am not going to understand what's gonna happen and I'm gonna undermine you. Oh, that could be a problem. That might be a devil's bargain too. I'm gonna say what could go wrong is that he manages to like get out of, like run away and call for help. Uh, I'm gonna say what badness could happen is uh, Nevin will be injured because they're going to lash out. Unfortunately, that was my second idea. Um, hmm. I'm going to say that um, the Acolyte is going to play along at first, as if, um, well, and then offer to guide us to wherever we need to go, do the initiation, whatever, and then stab us in the back. I like that, the long, the long, the long cons, good. Um, okay, so those are all great ideas. I get to decide ultimately, but it's just, but I get to, but everyone gets to speak. And now we talk about Dice Rebel. So, uh, well, first of all, to get the dice pool started, do you have a relevant skill or piece of equipment here? Depending on the route I take, I could, uh, I reckon I could argue for interrogation. I like it. Or yeah. uh, interrogation or potentially uh, rituals in the kind of just like talking shop kind of oh, sense. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll either way you're gonna role play it with however you decide, but I'll give you the first die. And yeah. now the second light die, you can only get two. The second light die is if you accept one of those devil's bargains, like I mentioned before. A devil's bargain oh. is something that each of us can offer you, and it happens no matter what, and it has to be a complicating thing. If you take the devil's bargain, you get the second light die. Uh, you can only take one. And then you can add a, you can, we can talk about dark dice in a moment, but let's just do devil's bargains for now. Um, I will start by offering the following devil's bargain. No matter what, this acolyte, uh, actually, I'm going to say no matter what. Okay. No matter what, this acolyte is going to be summoned by someone from the temple. Whether mm -hmm. you succeed or fail, someone's going to come looking for this person. Uh, my devil's bargain is, um, regardless of how the situation goes, it, it after having this interaction with you, this uh, acolyte is going to realize that they recognize you and they know of your crimes. I really I like that one. I, I was going to just turn my, my, comp, my bad thing into a devil's bargain and say that no matter what, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this in the trash and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up the game. You, you got to deal with Nevin no matter what as well. <laughs> um, any, any thoughts? I'm going to say that no matter what, this acolyte is going to have to be paid off to not mention that we're here. Yeah, so um, the way we would frame that as a devil's bargain, because that's to be, uh, I would probably put it no matter what, this, this acolyte is greedy. That way it can be a fail or a pass or, yeah, um, money is of utmost importance to them. You have several interesting thoughts, Rebel. I think I know what you're going to pick, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I like the idea that I am... Um, yeah, I'll, ta I'll take the devil's bargain that I get recognized um, specifically yeah. as... Specifically as someone who... 
uh, an attempted pilgrim who kind of went rogue and ended up preying on pilgrim caravans as a bandit. Oh, um, very good. Yeah, I like it. Uh, that's great. Okay, good. I can I can roll with that. You've got two light dice. I don't think you're doing dark dice automatically. You would add a dark die as well if what you're doing is um, if you're risking your mind or body. But I don't think this is really that kind of situation yet. It might escalate to that, but I don't think it is yet. So go ahead and roll risk um, risk two or two, dice. two light dice. Yeah. Yep. Cool. That is two fours. So a four is a success, but there is a complication. And then if you don't like the complication, you can add a dark die and try again. The okay. complication is going to be, so he is going to recognize you. The complication is going to be, um, <laughs> the complication is going to be, he recognizes you because you actually were working with him and you're, you owe him a cut of, oh, of some of the, <laughs> Right. And you you've just didn't even realize like, oh shit, that's the complication. Oh, if you're okay with that, yeah. yeah. If you're okay with that, we can roll with it. But absolutely. All right. That that works. Um, he says, yeah, no, I'm absolutely fine with that complication. That's great. He puts the knife down and he says, I know you. Uh undoubtedly I have traveled far and wide and made myself known to many places so i'm just a servant of the oh good lord it's nigel yes and you owe me money from the time that we tried to knock off those followers of saint hester you remember the pilgrimage the great I, cornucopia I, I, maintain, I maintain i maintain that we parted on good terms. It's not my problem if you don't read the small print. He looks up at you, Nevin, and says, do you know what you've gotten yourself into? This person, complete fraud, absolute fraud. Do not let them fool you. They're going to take everything, all the treasure, and leave you high and dry. Although, again, we've been over this, this this is all this is all put down this is all signed off it hasn't been signed off the it's going and again just 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 don't 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 listen to this this person okay they really can't be trusted he looks I mean, at you again nevin and says have you ever noticed when you're sitting around the campfire your friend revel is that what you're calling yourself these days your friend revel takes just a slightly larger portion of the food. Have you ever noticed that? I have a very fast metabolism, all right? Okay, I just, I just, sometimes you just need an extra little bit more to keep going. And while we're on the sub, while we're on the subject, while we're on the subject, at least I'm always, you know, the first up, the first of the task, and I have to drag someone's lazy behind out of the tent and cause a ruckus that spoils us getting a drop on people, honestly. I'm curious, Nevin, what you're thinking right now. So I'm just like watching this unfold and I'm nodding very seriously. And then very abruptly I say, I'm bored now. And I just go and start rummaging through things in the room. <laughs> very good, make a hunt roll. <laughs> Uh, the die roller is probably not working, so you have to just use no. dice. I'm just trying to see if I have anything. Can I use strength to like bust open some like foot lockers and things like that to get uh, a second? Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I think strength is perfect. Yeah. Two sixes. Nice. Go ahead and take your token, and I'll tell you what you find, if anything, in a moment. Uh, let's cut over to. Uh, and then while you're doing that, though, Nigel will say, well, well, he has the right idea. <laughs> um, and he, because he was probably in here also about to break up in Foot Lockers. <laughs> so uh, let's cut back over to Esfahan for a moment. Esfahan, you got a token and a encounter something terrible, right? Um... 
Let me tell you what you find. So you've got these deep blue star priest robes. There's also some bright yellow acolyte robes. You can take whatever color you wish. I will tell you something you do find that's um, incredibly interesting. There is a, um, a brass sensor. Uh, you know what a sensor is? Like you put incense or powder in it and then you like swing it around and smoke, you know, fills the, the, the space. There's this interesting brass sensor there and I think something from your training, Esvahen, lets you know that it is magical in nature. What is it? So most sensors are simple in make. There'll be one metal and like a chain and a place to put in the incense that you're gonna burn. You normally don't decorate them over much because the, they, most decorations would not be able to withstand the heat. However, on this particular one, you can see that around the rim of the sensor is that same constellation that she saw on the tile earlier, the one with Ramad el Znar at its tip and forming a serpent. And each of those little stars is like some kind of precious stone, not something you'd want on a sensor unless you had it enchanted to keep. You can put that in your uh, found equipment if you wish. and. However, that door opposite the one going into the sept, you can hear the chunk chunk of key unlocking it. Someone's about to come in. What do you do? Am I fast enough? Can I put on the blue robes that I just picked up? Uh, we'll say yes. Um, okay. Assuming you would kind so of maybe be thinking that? about that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to that. Osto, there's a large scorpion crawling on your back of your hand. Amberette is lousy with these scorpions. Uh, they're a problem. They just get into places and they're they're poisonous. They're 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 a pain in the ass. What do you do? Uh, well, uh, Osto in his uh, inventory has a uh, a set of studded gauntlets uh, in his equipment. So this scorpion is on the back of. <clears throat> The scorpion is on the back of one of these gauntlets and very quick as a reaction, he just takes his, his offhand and just like whacks it over and just goes to smash this thing uh, instinctively. Doesn't even think about it. I think because you have um, the studded gauntlets, I'm not going to make you roll. You can do that. Okay. Uh, so he does that. Describe it. <laughs> and yeah, he, he takes his hand and he just whacks it over, uh, goes to flatten this thing. And when he pulls his hand back, it's still like twitching just a little bit on the back and he flicks the stinger away, shrugs, and then just eats it. <laughs> came here looking for food. Uh, problem solved. Um, well, there's nothing, <laughs> the, the, the cabinet seems fairly bare apart from just like basic, like pots of sugar and flour and things of that nature. Um, but there are other, there, there's, that's just part of it though. There might be other places to search around here. Uh, there's Is... a pantry as well. Yeah, is there like any hole or crevice where the scorpion might have came through in the back of that cabinet or? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you can actually see it. There's a hole like on the back part of the cabinet up to the top. It just at some point crawled up there and went down in. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but anyway, what do you do after that? Uh, I think if he's if he's already gone through all the other cabinets, uh, I think he's going to guess that maybe maybe that scorpion knows where it's going and he's going to like sort of like put his eye back to the hole in the cabinet, maybe poke his hand through. Okay, good. Uh, make a hot roll. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good again. And the that's gauntlet can function high. as your second die because you're using the gauntlet to protect your hand, right? So. Uh, that's another five high. Take a token. Uh, there's nothing there. It just, it's just a just a hole, but you have your token. And <clears throat> I owe you something terrible though. There is a pantry. It's a little separate side room in the kitchen. You hear the smashing of a jar in the pantry. Either something fell or someone dropped something. What do you do? 
uh i think he i think also keeps his uh he's a blacksmith's hammer um which this is just equipment it's he's a hefty cudgel for hitting people but uh, i think he keeps his hammer uh in a pouch on his leg and so i think like he he sort of like rests his hand around the 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 handle of that and he stands up slowly from where his hand was in this hole and looks over towards the pantry door hello anyone there a chef perhaps meanwhile back in the priest quarters nigel presses up close to you revel and says now you listen to me i can tell that you and your little band here are probably looking for treasures, star treasures, I don't know, something to do with stars, it's the Temple of the Peerless Star. You're gonna take me with you and you're gonna give me a cut of what you find. Do you understand? Good. That's just about what I was going to suggest. Now, why don't we go see what your friend I... over here has found inside these footlockers? Sure, great idea, great idea. And Nigel strides across over to what you're doing, Nevin. You've probably ripped open a couple of these footlockers at this point. <laughs> um, uh, I do owe you, well, you got a, uh, what was your die result? You got six, right, Nevin? Six or something. Yeah. Take your token and I will tell you, you find something good too. I will say that most of the, um, most of it's just like, personal effects and junk that you probably don't care about but you will be able to gather up enough coin to equal two gold which is a huge amount of money in this game um that's like a that's like the equivalent of like two fat sacks of silver right so you're just like, <laughs> you're just like collecting all the money and nigel leans over into your ear rebel and says uh please start making the case for me to get my cut please I feel like I overhear this and I'm going to turn towards Nigel and I'm quite large. I think I'm like a very big man and I'm just going to look, I think I'm actually gonna look at Revel, actually not at Nigel. I'm not even gonna acknowledge Nigel and I'm going to say, your friend is your friend. He gets your cut. Nevin hears this, he gets your cut. This is for Nevin. We agreed before this that all the loot will be parceled out, you know, proportionally. There's no reason to get, you know, precious no. about all of this. And anyway, there's going to be, once we're done, there's going to be more than enough to leave all of us satisfied. Nevin has needs. This is Nevin's. All of us have needs, and I'm sure that um, my good companion here will prove, will more than prove his worth as time goes forward. By the way, no, you, how, have you been here long? Do you like know people here? He says, oh, shut up, Revel. And he actually sees something in one of the footlockers that Nevin has opened, a book, a journal perhaps, and he grabs it and he begins flipping through it. And then he tucks it into his, inside his robes. And he says, fine, keep your silver. And Nevin, uh, you, is there a chance that I could have gotten a, a, a glimpse over his have. shoulder? Yes. The pages depict constellations mm. at a glance. That's what it looks like. Someone drawing constellations okay. in the sky. And there was a distinct recognition in Nigel's eyes. You get the impression maybe he was looking for this. Yeah, okay. So what do you do? Um...
keep my own counsel for now, in and out of character. Fair enough. Nevin, uh, if you're keeping all the silver that you find, you can note uh, two gold in your little gold tracker on the character sheet. It's a good score. Oh, I already did. <laughs> Indeed. I also would just like to end the scene by like, I'm so over what whatever's happening that I'm not even acknowledging it. And I just take my money and I like walk out and I'm like, I'm going to find my brother. Indeed. That's for him. A priest comes in. You can tell he's a senior priest by the deep blue of his robes. And you have, have you chosen blue robes or yellow robes? Blue. Blue. Oh my God. Sorry, I thought my mic wasn't. Yeah, that's okay. He says, <clears throat> oh, you must be one of the priests from, from one of the other temples. This is quite a spectacular night. Indeed. Yes, well, praise be to the peerless star. He says, ah. so I actually, well, good. You know, I'm glad to find you here. Someone has actually paid to go to the top of the observatory. I need someone to escort them and uh, keep an eye on them so that you do not mess with the astrolabe. It is very important they do not make any adjustments to the astrolabe. Um, are you busy? Are you attending to anyone? Of course not. Good. Never too busy for a business. Good, good. Well, go go along then. Uh, you'll see them. They're at the entrance to the tower. Uh, and he kind of points you into the sept um, in that direction. <laughs> Do you go? Um, okay, so a couple of questions. So he, he just entered. And yeah. so if I am leaving, does he turn around to look at me leaving? Or does he just go further into No, I think he something? has like other business. Yeah, yeah. In the Wonderful. Sacristy. So as I make my way out to do this business can i turn around and using that brand new sensor i just got just over the head <laughs> yeah of course yeah um i think it's a risk roll um oh boy uh, jacob david alicia what could go wrong here if esvahan fails uh, he could have a really hard head, and he just he doesn't go out. Like you, you've just started a fight with this guy, and he is not out. <laughs> yeah, I think there could be like other priests coming from behind, and, like suddenly. Or, or I guess, oh, I guess there's also like the guy or person, whoever they are, who needs to be taken up, and maybe they're like waiting outside. Um, I would. I'm not sure if this counts as basically what Jason was suggesting, but I was going to suggest that it, you know, it boing, <laughs> and um, people from outside uh, out in the sets will hear the disturbance and come to investigate. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, I think there's. I think basically all the failures lead to you having to fight this guy or someone else. Uh, Alicia, do you have any other <laughs> subtle shading? No, to that I'm going to gonna, I'm gonna say <laughs> for a devil's bargain. Fair enough. Let's talk about dice. Is um, this something I can choose to not go through with? Absolutely. You can do something different. You can the something back out. different is, yeah, backing out and going to meet this mysterious yeah. person. Because the observatory, I mean, she did want to take a look at it. She did very it's much. It's probably a particular tower. interest to interest to you if no one else in the group, right? Um, I will tell you that as you step into the sept you get a, oh, well, it has the same, it has the same set goal. The Sept has an identical set goal of gain entry to the basement. So um, it's a, it's a different way of, well, ish. Um, but in any case, you step into the Sept. The Sept is crowded with members of the faithful and the blue robed star priests are ministering to them. Hymns are being sung, babies are being blessed, marriages are being performed on the spot. Prayers to Ramat Ilsnar are being whispered, and so on and so forth. I will tell you that you step into the sept behind the main altar. So the, the entrance to the sacristy is right behind the main altar. And the main altar is a large table set before an enormous statue of a nine-pointed star. So you're essentially looking at the back of that statue of this nine-pointed star. To the left of the statue, or to your right as you're facing it, is a pool of water 
glowing bright and white. Behind the statue in the floor is a hatch in the floor. And you can hear a priest and a couple, a priest doing a marriage in front of the main altar, um, to saying all the words, by the light of Ramadil's Nar, do you accept this man to be your husband and such and such and so forth, right? But what do you do? Is there a way I could, actually multiple questions here. So A, do I see this person I'm supposed to take to the observatory? Don't that's, know why that's what's that. All the way on the other side of the sept is the entrance oh to the observatory, which is the tower. You can just go over there and do it, but and nobody will stop you, mm. but it's not nowhere near where you're at right now. Mm. And B, that hatch, can I suddenly tap on it with my foot and be like, mm, can I open this? Yeah, uh, the hatch is, it doesn't appear to be locked or anything. It's just like a hatch in the mm. ground. So I am going to, I'm going to assume I bought the sensor with me. I am going to lean down and I'm going to start opening the hatch and wait for someone to stop me. We'll come back to that. Osto. The sound gets really quiet when you say something. And then you hear noise. Trying to be quiet, but clearly like descending. Uh, I think while uh, Osto has been, you know, calling out these things, uh, he's been taking like steps closer to the door to the pantry and uh, as he hears the steps receding he's just going to haul back and kick with his leg as hard as he can and just try to shatter the door and see what's going on there you see the pantry there is a hatch in the floor this person must have come up from that and now they've gone back down it and he'll have broken the door and then looked over, see the hatch. Uh, everyone, uh, I found it, perhaps. Rebel, Nigel's giving you weird side eye as he sort of steps out of the priest quarters. Nevin already left the priest quarters. What are you doing, Rebel? Um, sorry, what am I doing? Is that uh, what Rebel. Said? Rebel. I'm going to follow him, uh, follow him out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to follow him out. Can I, uh, this is Jacob asking a question. I have, I don't really have a strong idea about uh, the question that you gave me. Um, can I take like a massive leap in story wise? I'd like to follow him out and after a pause say, um, you, uh, say, you found it, haven't you? You found the dark star. And he says, <laughs> Oh, Revel, you think you have all the answers, don't you? And suppose I had, or suppose I am one step closer to finding it. What would you say to that?
I'd say this could be a very, uh, I'd say that it sounds like our goals are aligned. Indeed they are. There's meant to be something, there's meant to be something of that star the catacombs down below. It seems that the stars align to bring us together this night, Revel. Indeed. You realize, of course, that you're going to have to betray your little colleagues, don't you, in order to accomplish what you intend to accomplish? That's... Uh... They have their chance, they're in the game. They know what's at stake. He says, he looks at Nevin and says, I don't think he does. <laughs> and then we will take a five More or less, break. as an aggregate. <laughs> as an aggregate, indeed. We'll take five. I do want to hear about this dark star thing, mm -hmm. Revel. What's your thinking on this? I love it. I want to know what you're thinking on it is. My thinking on this is that the dark star is, it's not an object, it's an absence. Uh, whatever's going on celestially, I don't know. For whatever reason, sometimes something will pass in front of stars in key constellations, obscuring them. Um, it's, maybe it's one thing, maybe it's a few things. Uh, it's highly irregular. Various people have claimed to be able to track their happenings, but there's never been like a publicly, like a, a properly defined thing. But yeah, these stars getting covered up, uh, the dark star happening is generally seen as an ill omen. And Revel is interested in this because he was, uh, they were born under a dark star. And tradition, uh, I say tradition, I think in older times, um, in more ancient times, I think that. Uh, babies born under the dark star would have been uh, abandoned in the woods. Um, however, these are more civilized times, so they are simply ostracized, generally regarded as, as bad luck. And this is something that's dogged revel all their life. It's the reason behind why they went on a pilgrimage in the first place um, and just acts as an all purpose it features as kind of just an all-purpose sort of Damocles that's been hanging over them their entire life. I think it's probably safe to say that Nigel has the same situation to deal mm. with, or maybe something similar, right? Maybe you bonded yeah. over this in the past, right? Yeah. Indeed. We'll develop it more as we go. Nevin, you heard Osto call. What do you do? Um, I walk in, bags of cash, and I'm like, I also found it maybe how how are you how are you ahead of me already <laughs> whatever it's i will catch up as we go down this dark hole and see what awaits us you know i love a dark hole indeed who doesn't if you flip open the trap door you will see a ladder going down now, somebody just went down it, Osto, but you don't, at a glance, you don't see them there. They may, they may have gone down and then run off or something, but what do you do? Uh, this is the pantry. Is there like a heavy bag of rice or flour or anything like that? Uh, sure. Uh, oh, <laughs> I just got a direct message from SFN for exactly what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take whatever the heaviest sack of something soft is and just drop it down the hole and hopefully knock them off the ladder if it's long enough. 
I love it. I think it's actually a great move. Um, I'm not going to make you roll. You hear a thump. Oh, we had a guest. I'm going to look down. You will see that uh, the ladder goes down about like, I don't know, 15, 20 feet. And there are torches lit down there, as you can see. And there is a there is a, a priest or a cultist, a, a blue robed person, uh, laying flat on their face with a sack of rice, uh, on top of them. And I'm gonna I'm gonna call down to them. Then I'm gonna be like, "Hello, are you okay? <laughs> Don't no mind my brother's rudeness." There's no reply. I think you may have killed him. Uh, do you want to go first oh <laughs> i will take uh that honor let me just i i feel like he's like just a little bit too big and so like it takes a little bit of negotiating but then he ugh, you know manages to plop through and starts going down and as he's like going down he like pokes his head up and it's like ne nevin my my sweet brother where is the others. Let's check in with the others. Revel, um, Nigel is actually going into the common room. It's the one room that you all haven't been in yet down here. And he says, <clears throat> go catch up to your friends. I'll catch up with you later. The... Um... Did I hear Oslo going, Osto saying, we, uh, I found it? You did, yeah. Everyone but um, Espehan heard that. So. Cool. Um, I'm going to say, um, we're already down. We're already down one person. Don't know where. Yeah, there's one of us is already scarfed off elsewhere. We need to stick together. Else they'll, uh, else they'll realize something's up. Well, you, I'm searching this room, and he goes inside. <laughs> um, I'd like to just kind of take, uh, just kind of take a beat, um, look in on where Nigel's searching, um, and up and down the corridor, uh, up and down the corridor, just to see, like where we are up about because uh, it's like can i stay in a place where i can keep eyes on everyone uh you can hear nevin i think um mm. <laughs> uh, but they you can hear them in the kitchen they don't seem like the quietest duo um yeah. you know where they're at you have no idea where Sven is and nigel is is in this common room if you glance inside it's just a room with a long trestle table and chairs there's like tin plates cutlery that sort of thing some there's a little nook with some wing back chairs and he's just kind of going through things he's just his instincts are to find anything that might be valuable cool uh you know what i'm gonna pitch in with um um pitch in with nigel uh that said i'm gonna i'm going to call over to nevin um be with you in a, uh, with you in a second. Don't, you know, don't disturb anything. Um, and then, yeah, head into the common room and start yeah. rifling through things as well. Um, you can do just a hunt roll to see if you, you know, cool. are you just sort of just like tossing the place, kind of seeing what you can find? Uh, kind of a deal, yeah. Um, so, one die unless you have a relevant skill or piece of equipment. Yeah. Um, mm -mm -mm. Could I argue for saints that so I'll know, I'll recognize iconography and things like that? Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I like that. That's good. 
Cool. So two dice. A uh, one and a four. You will encounter something terrible, but you will take a token. Um, cool. I will tell you that you will notice that the tin plates do have punched on them an image of the nine-pointed star, but they're just tin plates, and so they're not really worth anything. Um, and let's see what else might be in this room. Something that might get your attention, though, it certainly has Nigel's attention, is a tapestry hanging on the wall depicting an ochre-colored sky with constellations embroidered in the ochre-colored sky. The tapestry itself appears to be silk with gold and silver embroidery and probably worth a fair amount of money. Nigel is looking it over very carefully. He says, help me with this. Not, exa um, not exactly easily concealable, I say, going to help him with it. Yeah, indeed. The complication, well, there's no complication. They just encounter something terrible. He says, how much do you know about the night sky, star brother? Um, or st star brother, sister, or are they them? What do we call you? <laughs> star sibling. <laughs> uh, star, star kin. Star, star kin. kin, that's good, yeah. Um, as much as I ever have. Um, much as I ever have, despite my best efforts, understandably, it's hard to get um, with you know with, with with this face plastered all over posters. It's hard to get into a lot of places of learning. Thanks says, for that, by the way. He says, hmm. "Well, then you may have picked up on the fact that these stars." in the sky, constellations depicted in the embroidery. This is a night sky that is not our own. Hmm. Um, and he's folding up the tapestry yeah. and putting it in his belongings. Uh, Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. When you said tapestry, I was I was picturing like a, a wall carpet. So it's going to be like. Oh, it's not that. It's it's like the size of a. I mean, it's it's not like. I think it's a, I think it's a thin enough fabric. It can be rolled up or folded. So, and it's like the size of okay, a, sure. like a large picture, basically. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, I will. I will let this go. Um, um, I will let uh, I will let this go. No, actually, no. I am going to I am going to dispute that. I'm going to go. Hey, hey, hey! You're going to crinkle it. You're going to um, you're going to you're going to disturb it. You Sorry. read my mind, Nevin. Um, you're going to yeah. You're going to you're going to disturb it. At least roll it up. He's like, oh, you fine. know, fine, fine. And he sets it down to roll it up, and we'll pick up with Esfahan. Esfahan. You, no one stopped you from opening up the trap door. There is a iron, like a tight spiraling staircase that goes down to the next level. Do you go down? Always go down. Going down the steps, you accomplish the set goal in the, in the sept, which is you get access to the basement level. But down in the, 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 the stairs themselves lead to a room, an office of some sort. There is a large wooden desk and wardrobe. Both are painted very deep midnight blue, quite heavily lacquered. There's a small bed with a midnight blue wood frame that's kind of pushed up against the wall. What do you do? Uh, well, first off, I want to close the trap door behind me. Done. Um, second of all, I want to rummage through that drawer, the dresser. Yeah, the wardrobe is, um, you can definitely do that. Uh, if you pop it open, I'm not even gonna make you roll because it's very just like, well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what you see at a glance. At a glance, you'll see a set of, these are robes of the high priest. How do you know the robes of the high priest of the temple? 
an easy answer as I saw them earlier. Um, <laughs> so the way the, pre the robes appear to work is the acolytes have those pale yellow robes that you would associate with the color a star is in a painting. Now the um, priests themselves have a deep bluish robe which you would associate with the night sky. The high priest robes, however, are that same blinding white that, um, I forgot what the name was, Ramat Ilznar was before it dimmed. Or dimmed, yeah. Um, yeah, the acolytes are the color of the dimmed star. <laughs> um, so yeah, pristine white robes. Uh, that's what you see just as you open the, the, the wardrobe doors. What do you do then? Mm. How is the wardrobe laid out? Like, is it just a space for clothes, or uh, are there like drawers? There's a there's a hanging dowel with a, that the robe is hung up on, and then there are like, uh, yeah, there's like a, a a bottom, and then below that there's like a drawer that's like a separate compartment. Mm. So before I rummage through everything in this room, uh, was there any way I could have barred the hatch from opening? Did it open? Outward or inward? It opened outward. Um, so mm -hmm. you, if you have something in your equipment that would help you bar it close, I'll let you do that. Or I you can, have or you can pick a something mirror. from the drop down. <laughs> Maybe something from the drop down would be helpful. Like yeah. a crowbar or something. Mm -hmm. There's a chain. There is a crowbar. Yeah, let's let's wedge a crowbar in there. Just um, make go sure I'm and, not followed. Yeah, go ahead and uh, select a crowbar from the drop down and and just it's make up. a make a little note that, or just remember that you don't actually have it with you. It's use, it's being held to hold or the use. Going to hold put them. negative one uses there. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Um, but that will secure it though. At least for a time, nobody will be able to go that way. Hmm. Uh, we'll come back to this. Masto and Nevin, you are going down your own. It's a ladder, just a simple wooden ladder. You knocked out, possibly killed a priest uh, at the bottom of the ladder. <laughs> then what? <laughs> Sounds like uh, Osto was going first, or Osto, or do I? Was, yeah. Osto, uh, if you go down, you will also achieve the set goal. You have reached the basement. Congratulations. And there is a brand new set goal. Uh, this brand new set goal is available. This is the same set goal where you're at as well, Esfahan. The basement cycle is discover the nature of the temple's most valuable treasure. Can you remind me uh, how hunt tokens are spent for cycles? You can spend them one for one to find a treasure worth one gold, or you can okay. pool them. The three of you, like you and other characters, or just on your by your own, you can pool three of them to automatically accomplish the cycle. Gotcha. Uh, I'd let me hear how, what you think about this, Alicia. But I do think it would be kind of hilarious if uh, we spent collectively the two of us have three hunt tokens. Uh, if we spent them and like just found on this person's body details on the the most valuable treasure. <laughs> That's 100 percent within your ability. Yes, I do love that journey for us. Um, <laughs> I really do, especially because I was gonna say, like, as I'm coming down, I was gonna be like complaining about how Revel thinks that I'm so dumb and it's not fair, and why does everybody always like underestimate us? <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I, I don't know, Nevin. I mean, I think you, you've got such a good, strong head on your shoulders, and anyone who views you otherwise you just forget about them and they're like sort of you know hits the ground nevin hits the ground uh you know goes over sort of pokes the body uh like checks the pockets of the robes of course uh and what are, are you we spending on <laughs> are you gonna spend them yeah let's do it okay uh so both of you erase your tokens and indeed, you will find da, 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 da. Ah. you will find a book.
The book is a history of the temple itself. You must study the book for one hour before you can learn the answer, but you have it. I do not think that Osto is a strong reader. It might take him two. Indeed. But the book with all the information is yours. And okay. the set goal is achieved. Whenever you or anyone else in the party takes the time to actually study it, a learned person might be able to figure it out quicker. Um, you will you will learn the actual nature of it, but you have the you have the information at hand. Yeah, I think uh, Osta like picks up the book by the outer you know leather bound cover and sort of like the way that you sometimes like will unfurl a poster just sort of like opens it up like this and looks at it for a minute and then closes it and looks at Nevin. I th I think we need to find Esfahan. That's a good idea. Let me tell you where you're at though. <clears throat> so the basement. The basement of the temple is a set of rooms connected by a series of short and tight corridors. There are candles under glass cloches affixed to the walls that light the way and they're all lit. If you just check a couple of these doors, they're all locked. And you'll notice at the end of the corridor that you're standing in, there is what appears to be a, like, an, like an iron bar door, like a prison cell, like you can see inside it, that has been rubbed with gold powder. And right behind it, you can see stairs going down. That may well lead to the catacombs, which is where you're actually trying to get. But there's also several locked doors on this level as well. And Esfahan, how quiet are you being right now? I am trying to be very, very quiet. I, I think the door will hold, but I do not want anyone trying it. Yeah. Um, Nevin and Osto, do you have any particular trainings or skills or skills or background that would like help you hear things trying to be quiet? <laughs> I have beasts and trails. I'll take beasts. So I feel like that. You can up. hear someone down the corridor inside one of the rooms. You can hear like someone clearly trying to be quiet. <laughs> you hear a, the chunk of metal. You hear footsteps. You hear things being opened. What do you do, Nevin? I'm actually just going to call out for Esfahan because people think I'm dumb, but <laughs> Ravel is up there and Esfahan disappeared, and who else would be trying to be quiet? So I'm just gonna shout, probably too loudly, her name. Esfahan, you hear Nevin literally calling for you. What do you do? I'm just gonna do a quick rummage through the drawers before I actually exit to where I hear this call. Uh, the drawers of the desk? Mm -hmm. oh, or the drawers of the wardrobe, there's two. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. The desk, actually, and I'd like to grab those high priest robes if I can, and then eventually grab acolyte robes, then I can have a full set. <laughs> you can add the high priest robes to your uh, to your bound equipment. Those are actually worth one gold. So. Oh yeah. And did you say you're rummaging through the desk? The desk. Quickly. Uh mm huh. -hmm. You go for the desk drawer, and you feel the sharp prick of a needle in your fingertip. I've been stabbed. A needle trap in the lock hole has pierced you, and you can feel poison surging through your body. Let's check in with Revel. Revel, are you there? You've been off camera, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, yes. Sorry, I was finishing my take, and I forgot oh, to okay. switch the camera sorry. back on. Well, you're well. You heard all that, so it's good. Revel. Yeah. Nigel has the has has the, the the thing rolled up it's it is pretty good size you'll have to kind of slunk it over your shoulder right um it, it's not exactly the kind of thing you can hide and yeah. he, and uh he's getting ready to throw it over his shoulder what do you do again i'm uh not i'm not resisting that uh i'm not resisting that for now um i'm going to be making a 
um, making a big uh, big deal of like, come on, we should be, yeah, we need to be getting going. He's like, fine, we need to be fine. getting going. The others should leave like, us behind. He's like, all right, fine, lead the way, go. And let it be noted, he has both a journal and a tapestry, both which have constellations marked on them. <laughs> I'm aware of this. I'm aware of this. Re Revel is waiting for their moment. Indeed. Um, and they're going to, uh, yeah, they're going to be waiting like at the door to the common room, being like, like they're trying, they're trying to hustle, mm -hmm. um, hustle him along. You can absolutely do that. Um, so it sounds like you're headed to the. Uh to to the kitchen i guess where osto and nevin yeah were. yeah the, ki the, the kitchen the place that i last heard nevin and osto yeah and uh yeah, you can and you do and you'll you'll right around that point you'll probably hear nevin hollering for esfahan <laughs> down below and you can join them esfahan you are yep. you have been poisoned you can feel it you can feel the your blood burning you don't know what the poison is going to do but it's not good what do you do At this point, I am going to attempt to open the door or like rush out the door into the corridor and be like, help, I've been poisoned. Is there anyone here who has, Super a, natural, has a skill that would be helpful here in this moment? You can uh, all I be together. A, I have a suggestion. Um, I have a ritual yoke, which allows me to apply the strength of a spectral bull to a situation. It doesn't specify. Very that curious what that means. Well, well, <laughs> in this context. No, so, 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 so I, I think the obvious usage of that would be to apply that strength, like to me, if I needed to perform some Herculean thing. But like, I, I'm sort of thinking if it could be applied to other people, could I use it on Esfahan to fortify her against the poison, to give her oh, the strength of the bull in a more yeah. oh, endurance the constitution sense. of a bull. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I, oh I like that. I think that's really good. Yeah, I think that's great. That is clever. Um, I mean, Esfahan, are you okay with putting your fate into Osto's hands here? <laughs> I don't think I have a choice. Okay. So this is a risk roll. I am roll. in your hands. This is a risk roll. You're going to need, um, mm -hmm. you're going to need a different colored dice, David, for the dark die. Um, okay, I've got so I've got these dark okay, wood great. and I've got these light wood. Fabulous. So. Let's talk about stakes. So obviously save Esfahan from poison. Um, what could go wrong here? And here I'll just suggest that maybe what does the poison do <laughs> um, if it takes effect? Who has thoughts? Um, I am burning up from the inside. I will be left just a shriveled husk. Yeah. Uh, I was going to suggest that it's not a, it's not a lethal poison. Um, if nothing else, because there's the chance of it accidentally injecting the wrong person. Um, so it's just very unpleasant and incapacitating until the proper authorities can show up and remove them. Um, so it's not lethal, but it's going to be very, very unpleasant. I don't think I have anything better than either of those. Do you have any other thoughts, Alicia? All right, so bad things. Uh, let's talk about dice. Um, do you have a relevant skill here, Osto? Endurance, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I think endurance would be the best I got. And in this case, the knowledge of endurance as opposed to your own endurance. Um, mm -hmm. Devil's bargains. This is could get, this could get fun. Devil's bargains and poison. Who has an offer? And. Obviously, Esfahan, you can shape your fate here a little bit <laughs> uh, with your devil's bargain. <laughs> May I? Make your offer. Uh, yeah. I have an idea. Yeah. Um, the, however this goes, whether you resist the poison or not, it's going to leave its... Um, it's going to have ravaged your insides in some nebulous manner hmm. um which mechanically will be represented as plus one ruin mm, yeah i think that's pretty oh. good um as a as a general matter i think it'll, it'll manifest as a condition uh ruin yeah, can sure. only ever go up on a dark die there's like no other condition that will cause uh, sure to go up. but a condition for sure um i'm gonna say this will also probably be a condition but i think that you somehow like become connected to the spectral bull 
you know, some spiritual sense or maybe even some other sense. I don't know. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I was going to make another kind of connection, which is that you somehow become connected to Esfahan. And I think maybe you bear like some kind of physical marking of what happened to her, but that there's some kind of like you gain a little bit of her power. Oh, like Ost somehow. Osto takes up like Osto, Osto like reflects yeah. some, like Esfahan. Yeah. I think that's really that's actually. I have really an idea for those marks if yeah. that's taken. Uh, well, you can offer it. You can make your offer, and your offer can be a variation of another offer for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. So does it have to affect Austin or can it affect me? Like it can affect, it's been I, it, going it, both it can affect either of you. It doesn't matter. But the, uh, it's 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 uh, David cannot speak basically because David's making dice rolls. So, that's wrong. Yeah. so um, I want to say that what what will happen regardless of whether you succeed or fail is that um, the poison does not the poison spreads from Estahan into that spectral bull. And now every time you attempt to apply the strength of that spectral bowl, it's going to be a little whack. Hmm. Interesting offers on the table. What do you think, David? Um, let's, let's review the offers. So we, we have basically poison goes into the bowl and that'll affect any further use of it. Uh, we had- uh, The bowl is connected to for... Esfahan. Yeah. Uh, there was like Esfahan's insides will be ravaged and gain a condition. Mm -hmm. um, and what was the fourth one? Uh, it was Alicia's. Uh, what was I think it's Esfahan and Osto are like yeah. connected. Yeah. So oh, that's right. Right. oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, exactly. oh yeah. Osto I, takes I really like that kind of, one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, I just I always love the deepening of ties like in the yeah. group because then it's all the worse if anyone has to betray anyone or all that stuff. So I think it's great. Uh, um, so two light, and you must do a dark because of the ritual. So roll risk two one. Gotcha. All right. And we're looking for the highest result. Uh, that is a one on all three die. Whoa, <laughs> that is not magnificent. Good. Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> that's really bad. Um, wow, I rarely have to consider the failure. It doesn't happen that often. Not like not not absolutely like that anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, you have an option. There's always the help roll. Someone can pitch in and help if they are willing to risk their own ruin to do so. Um, no matter what, they're going to probably do be more help than the, the, no matter what, they're probably going to be helpful because you've got a one. <laughs> so yeah, um, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nevin will always be there for his brother, so it's no question that okay. I would step in how yeah, i think are like, you... vi visually with yeah. with activating this ritual it's like osto rolls up his sleeves and you can see that he has these oops, on my mic uh, you can see that he has these tattoos up and down his uh forearms mm -hmm. that have i think like like huge curling bull horns as like a, a significant element of them and uh he also has in his possession a holy symbol which i'm going to say he found in the mine and i think going with some of our star imagery i think it's like a little locket that has uh, some pattern of constellation on it. I don't think Osto's ever taken that close of a look at it, but he like holds that in one hand and you like see a sort of like soft glow go over his arms. And then he puts a hand on Esfahan and tries to imbue this power in her. And that's like the setup. So Nevin, how are you helping when you can tell this is going south? Um, I think that I'm gonna do like a blood of my blood mm -hmm. situation and like slice my palm and slice Osto's palm and then like grasp hands uh, and using my like strength and beasts and all that like help to fuel the, the You roll the, a single light die and uh, it gets added to the results. If you roll a one, your ruin goes up. Three. Three. Um, it's still a fail because <laughs> one through three is a fail. Um, it's still a fail. It's not as bad a fail. Uh, I don't think it's as quite a a a, a critical uh, failure. Revel, you can get in here and do a help if you want. Uh, yeah, I had an idea for that. 
is that I was going to um, see this, uh, see that it is going whack. Yeah, in Nigel, some Nigel way. says over your shoulder, he's like, wow, your colleague has already managed to get themselves poisoned. How <laughs> great crew yeah, you yeah, have here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone has the first time. And then I'm going to um, uh, dig around in my backpack and I'm going to produce a bottle of, or, or a small vial of, um, a small vial of um, holy water. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, which I'm going to give to, um, Actually, because uh, because Osto has uh, two, because Osto has one hand on Esterhan and one hand uh, being gripped by Nevin. I'm just going to kind of uncork it, uh, put hands on the back of his head, and go bottom. Yeah, your form's off. Bottoms up, mate. <laughs> and just tip it down his throat, um, and that that acts as uh, a, a buffer, effectively. Roll a light die. If you're, if it comes up a one, your ruin goes up. But otherwise, it counts as part of the roll. Cool. It's a four. It's a success oh, finally. <laughs> 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 it is a success. Um, Esfahen, if you want to risk it, you can help and try to bump it up to a six. A six will be a full success. A four is a success with a complication. The complication is just going to be I'm going to give Esfahen uh, and Osto a condition that. From this the trauma of this experience but otherwise if you're okay with that esvahen survives so um. uh yeah i very rarely roll sixes that is not a risk i want to take <laughs> okay fair enough <laughs> um well it's still ultimately your role Osto. so go ahead and describe how you save esvahen from the poison yeah so uh from where uh, osto's hand is in contact with esvahen you see like the tattoo almost like come to life on his arm i think this is his first time like trying to push it onto someone else so like that's why this is going so <laughs> sideways uh but uh the tattoo uh like on the surface of his skin kind of like weaves and crawls its way off uh and on to esfahem and i wanted to ask uh because you said you had an idea as well for marking i think there's an exchange of marks here as you're going to gain one half of this bull horn tattoo and I'm going to gain something from Esfahem. What does what Osto gain from Esfahem? So I was thinking, because I don't think Esfahem has tattoos, so it mm -hmm. wouldn't be an exchange of tattoos kind of thing. Yeah. But I was thinking that the part of the bowl that remains with you, we now see a piece of like silk that's embroidered with constellations kind of wrapped around its horn. Oh, interesting. So it like yeah, alters. Vanished dancer astro astrologer. Astro yeah, cool. cool. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, the tattoo transforms in the process uh and like nevin nevin's hands clasped through the blood sort of leaking out uh around the edges uh and i like the idea I of that doing absolutely nothing <laughs> it's just like <laughs> nevin cutting his hands open <laughs> uh, and it and didn't finally, <laughs> rebels like, is the important bit <laughs> but now i think i think like everyone is like sort of like chained together and it's it's unpleasant as we're all sort of enduring the sensation and finally revel just comes over and pours in what is effectively in this case an antidote of sorts uh mm -hmm. the final fortification um and the glowing subsides any sort of you know seizing sub subsides uh and hopefully the pain mostly subsides although there are conditions that are coming out of this so what, what's what's left conditions over? Uh, Esfahen, you're taking the condition just exhausted or drained, put drained. Uh, that one's simple enough. Osto, your condition is going to be called Star Bull. And if I deem that those would affect you in a future roll, I can make you add a dark die to a roll. So. And. All right. Um. That was a great scene, great moment. Um, I don't know that we can top it today. So I think we'll just go ahead and call the session uh, with everyone yep. taking a breath, having uh, Esvahen brought from the, from the brink and the book. I will tell you about the book, assuming you give it to Esvahen at some point to read through it. 
<laughs> like right as Esfahan comes to from <laughs> like, <here we> <laughs> Osher's just like, oh, <laughs> by, by the way, here. Esfahan's like, oh, thank you. How I'm so grateful. And you're just like, book. <laughs> Here's how you think. Here's how you help us. Um, Nigel is leaning in close to hear the story revel as Esfahan reveals all. But essentially, this book is a history of the temple itself. You will learn the book details that the most valuable treasure in the temple is Ramet Il's No. Ramet Il's No, a variation of Ramet Il's Nar. Ramet Il's No is the starlight serpent a beast okay. the priests believe to be an avatar of Ramad Ilznar. And there is a handwritten page at the end revealing that the egg, or the, sorry, revealing that the serpent has laid an egg for the first time in a century. This is almost certainly why they have called the Holy Night. I would also like to take a moment to invite you all to answer your questions, if you wish. Your questions that were posed, if you have some answers, you can tell us about it. You already kind of did, Revel. Um, but if you have something to add, you certainly can. And if anybody else wants to answer their question, they can. Uh, the question Osto had was, uh, were you taught to worship Ramatil Snar as a child? Um, and I just sort of paraphrase for like, how do those in your community view the star and those who worship it? Um, I don't think that Osto was particularly taught to worship anyone or, or anything uh, growing up. I don't think, I think religion was like the furthest thing from his mind. First, first and foremost was getting food in his mouth and in his brother's mouth. Um, and so it was like a real shock to him when he, you know, found this object in the, in the mines and then like started to have these this hear this voice and see these visions uh and i think he's been brought to this place but he doesn't actually know who the god is that he's listening to it just all feels so important to him that he kind of feels compelled to go along with it um and it has led him here and so who's who's from ilsnar mm, i don't know uh, but my God, whoever they are, told me to come here in order to prepare and gain what I need in, in order to fix this fountain. I do. He does know his mission. But yeah, that's my answer for Osto. Thank you. Would anyone else like to answer their question now or wait till next time? I think I'd like to wait till next week for mine. Okay. Same with Nevin looks like. And Rebel, we already kind of learned yours. So very good. And so with all that said, we shall do peerless stars and wishes. Um, stars and wishes hey. is our, uh, <laughs> our debrief technique. Um, stars are things that you enjoyed about the session. Um, maybe something another player did, something about the characters, something about the, uh, the adventure, something I did, um, something about the system, uh, and as many things as you wish. And wishes are things that you hope to see next week in the story. So whoever would like to go first, Take it away. I mean, obvious star for this disaster scene at the end, which was <laughs> so good in its abject failure, which I loved. What I loved about that scene is it was 100% provoked by Nevin's recklessness because it caused S for him to be reckless. And that's and which caused the poisoning. And then now you're all suddenly in a mess, which I think is great. So yeah, it was a star for me too. Yeah, I, I really like uh, how we're already kind of settling into like some character roles. Um, like the, the, <laughs> Alicia and I barely did any prep before this, just like, oh, maybe we should be related this time because we've played in a few games together. Uh, and like already we have an, a, a dynamic settling for Osto and Nevin. Um, I, I like that Revan and Nigel are sort of developing this little little ritual they go through uh, of needling each other about their past experiences. And like it's the least trustworthy duo. And I really like that. And then 
Asphahen is like the one who's actually making the smart plays <laughs> while everyone else is kind of distracted. Except right until the end. <laughs> well, yeah, and you're, you're absolutely right for like, it's at the end of the day, it's kind of Nevin's fault because Asphahen got rushed. But like, that's that's the beauty of working in a team, right? Um, so yeah, no, I I think this is already shaping up really fun. I'm. It's really interesting to me, like already how different it feels from Trophy uh, Dark um just i i know like is where we were in the first bit and we were all like almost entirely rolling light dice and i'm just like where are the dark dice like <laughs> I'm, I'm used to things getting worse faster uh so that this is fun i like this also currently there's no like pushing us to murder each other which is nice except maybe nigel yeah trophy, trophy nice, becomes but... pvp really fast right so yeah um yeah, whoever wants to do stars and wish this go for it. Or you could or just or if anybody else wants to add anything or whatever. It's a pretty open um, forum here. I'd like to uh so stars wise, um, yeah, no, really like the as as David said, really like the dynamic that's developing between um well ar ar around all our characters. Um and I also I also like that we're folding in this dark star stuff um as far as wishes are concerned i'd like to oops i'd like to see some more interaction between um rebel and uh esfahan and just generally between esfahan and the rest of the group because um not as a criticism but you did kind of like go off on your own for a large part of the narrative um And for also oh, a few slightly self-conscious that my my question is the one that's kind of had a lot of weight in the narrative so far. So I'd like to see others come forward as well and just add more chaos and complication to the to the story. Uh, stars for me i i also really enjoyed the uh the poisoning scene that was really great um i i actually really liked that esfahan went off uh by herself i i i think it's sort of um like the movie version of our story made lots of sense to me <laughs> like i can see it mm. like playing oh, out yeah. the way it played out you know um uh so that i thought was really great um i like i love the interactions between revel and nigel and i thought the dark star stuff was really fun and i'll be curious to see where that goes um, I was happy to have an NPC that I was kind of able to get into the role play. So that was really enjoyable for me, um, as opposed to just being the person, you know, sort of uh, calling balls and fouls on the dice. Um, and and I thought Austin and Nevin's relationship was really fun. I, I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, I, I like their sort of like, I like their sort of like himbo <laughs> energy <laughs> they've got going on, right? Like, I think it's pretty great. So um yeah you have like revel this sort of like kind of uh the, who's got this like sort of like dark like kind of treacherous history you've got Osto and nevin with their like kind of uh himbo energy and then espahan seems to be like the person who's like kind of there to get things done you know and i think that that all like is it's a it's a good dynamic and i and the fact that it's already sort of arisen just in the first session i think bodes well for the future sessions so i'm really happy about that uh wishes i um I, I love, we, we do have like a kind of lighter, more jocular tone. I think that's appropriate for the first set or two uh, of, of an adventure. I know by necessity it's going to get darker because as you go deeper into the catacombs, it gets darker and scarier. And so I will look forward to that. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, just really curious to see how you all uh, uh, handle things. And also another star too, I thought everyone did a great job with, um, with Devil's Bargains and stuff today. That was really fun. Um, uh, some groups have a harder time kind of sliding into that part of the game, but you all did a really, really good job with it. So it really drove the story in interesting ways. So <clears throat> definitely stars for Austo and Nevin's relationship. It brought me so much joy throughout today's, um, mo I wish I could say disaster fest. It was not a disaster fest. Um, I enjoyed that bit in the, um, priest quarters where, um, Ravel and Nigel were just going back and forth and Nevin was just like, I don't care. I'm here to get shit. I'm going to do it. Um, I enjoyed that uh, you forced me to um, 
exit the main area for a second I thought I was actually going to have to go up to the observatory and I was like do I do I get a rope and just rapple all the way down but there was a hatch conveniently. You could have totally gone um, to the observatory. It would have been interesting. Yeah. I considered it, but then I was like, mm, I've been away from these people too long. I don't, they get up to too much when I'm away. Um, wish, I wish I thought of this earlier because I thought of it about five seconds ago, but um, the connection between Osto and Espen, I kind of wish I'd made, I'd asked that it be a kind of, um, not feedback loop, but a feedback valve where some of Esfahan's emotions just kind of get fed into Osto and Osto's just left with this horribleness. I mean, I think the Starbull condition, we can play with that a little bit, right? Because I'm interpreting the Starbull as like the stars from the astrologer and the bull from Osto and it being, and kind of what, and mm. the sort of interpretation of that, I think there's space for that for sure, you know? Yeah, it's, it's almost like a star-crossed sort of thing, right? Of, of mm. connection, so... It's just like your energy is kind of mingling, basically. Yeah. Like Nevin and Osto's blood. Ne ne Nevin and Osto's <laughs> blood uselessly mingling. <laughs> right. Oh, I loved that tableau. Just having Osto like this one hand on Espahan's forehead, the other hand clasping Nevin's as just blood drips and Ravel, Ravel just being like, this is unnecessary. <laughs> Pouring, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shoving holy water down his throat. Like, on, on which note, on which note, one star that I, um, that I love and I want to kind of develop further is that Revel clearly thinks that they're the adult in the room, but it's actually Espahan is the adult in the room. I really like that. I also That's like, perfect. I like, I also really enjoyed my, I, I really enjoyed Nigel's presence in the game and I like Nigel's vibe uh, as I've sort of, cause I'm just sort of like, you know, extemporaneously doing this, but I, but I enjoy this sort of like vibe of like, there's like a judginess there, right? It's like, it's very like judgmental and very like, like um, it also, but it also kind of suggests that there's, there's more to Revel and Nigel's past that is not being like spoken about because like they clearly are like kind of needling at each other, you know? Like it just feels like there's more going on there. And I think that's the interesting to explore what all that means. Big, big, so. big bad breakup energy. Yeah, they really, oh, that's what I was oh, saying. Yes. It's, got, it's got big, like, it's got big, like X energy, right? Which I think is pretty great. Mm. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to draw from my spire thing. And um, so there's this thing called an attractive foil where um, it's basically enemies to lovers to enemies again. And uh... it feels yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, any other stars or wishes? I just want to say that I want to make it clear that even though Niven's attempt to help with blood failed, I remain convinced that that was, in fact, the thing that tipped it over the edge. It helped emotionally. I saved the day. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, I saved the day. Uh, t tying back, uh, Jason, to what you said earlier about, like, things are necessarily going to get darker, uh, I think my other, my wish is uh, to see how Osto and Nevin go from sort of happy himbo energy, like how how they face the darkness going deeper in. We've already like just killed a guy and just like, eh. Uh, so like, I feel like there's definitely some seed ground for, for some darker stuff with them. I, I'm really um, excited. I like the idea that we didn't start, not that it was planned, but we because we didn't discuss it, but the, the relationship didn't start antagonistic. Um, and maybe it will go that way or maybe it will like fluctuate back and forth because that's like what real life siblings are like and i'm really excited for what's yeah. going to happen situationally with that any other stars or wishes okay well uh that was a great session fantastic first session with a with a new group um i will look forward to continuing next week <laughs>